Okay. I'm going to wait for a thumbs up. Ready to go? Lovely. Okay. So, I'm really glad that y'all are here. I'm, I'm very pleased with this, that I could be here. It, uh, Pi Ohio is uh, kind of home for me. Um, I... I uh, live and work in the Bay Area in San Francisco, but I'm from Zanesville, Ohio. I went to school here. Um, I am Isaac Kelly. I, is that too small? Great. Okay. Uh, I have been doing Python for five or six years. I don't know. I don't, I don't really keep track, and years are rough. Um, anyway, long time, and I have been coming to Pi Ohio. I did... Um, did a talk two years ago or something. And now I do art installations and interactive art and world building professionally. But most of my work is for a private social organization. So I wanted to bring something here. I wanted to build something for you and so that we could talk about how uh, you get to use Python now to do all sorts of weird, interesting things. Uh, and I love Python as a uh, tool for building interactive art. Um, so here it is, right? It's a. Uh, I mean, it's cute, right? When when I look at it. <laughs> so so um, uh, it does it does a couple of things, and you've seen it flash a couple of images, right? Um, I can do. Uh, I can do a number of different things, but. Uh, I want to talk about some of the inspirations first. So, um, I call it Snow White. Does this look familiar? Um, right, mirror, mirror. Um, but there are previous uh, inspirations. This is Monet. This is um, Impressionism. And I read the first paragraph of the Wikipedia article. <laughs> so, um, so, th so this is a painting, right? And the further, b the further back you stand, the more feeling you get of it. And there were several branches. Um, and then we have the post-Impressionist, Van Gogh. Um, but we also have Picasso, which is super fun. Um, who is you? Can you wave? Maybe? Who is? Yeah, OK. Can you see yourself in the mirror? Can you see yourself now in the mirror? No? OK. Um, we're going to pick somebody closer. Here we go. You can see the mirror, right? Yeah. So Picasso was a fan of cubism, or, you know, fan or inventor of, you know, it's, I know, I know you can't see on the video, and, you know, uh, you know, come find me, and maybe I'll turn this on if you're on the internet. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I really can't do much for you, but I'm, I'm accessible, I'm easy to find. Um, so what you, what you can see is the same image from several perspectives, right? And, and that's sort of what you can get here if I put my camera over here and you can see yourself in the reflection and in the video feed, um, which is a kind of neat trick, or I like it. Uh, but then we have Seurat. Seurat was uh, an inventor of pointillism. And this painting is how every screen you've ever used is built. It is thousands of tiny little dots of a single individual color, and your eye while these are red, green, and blue, sees more colors. And this, you know, the lighting and things, it's... Anyway, look at this painting, it's gorgeous. Not here, look at other places, right? But this is, this, is how, uh, this is how LCDs work, this is how modern computer displays work, right? And so it's all built on this old art. Um, and so what I built was a really um, convoluted version of that. Uh, and, and really small. So this display is uh, 32 by, by 40 pixels, um, which is on a modern non-retina screen, like less than the size of the, your, your fingernail. It's very, very small. 
And on the retina screen, it's even smaller, right? So we've, we've just been compressing this and trying to get it to be more realistic, to get this pointillism to be more, more and more perfect, right? So we've lost that impressionist influence. So that's what this is. Um, and so when I was originally writing this talk, I, um, my introduction said it was totally devoid of artistic vision, but uh, as a canvas to make your own piece. And then, um, and then I made one up, uh, like as if I were gonna apply for a grant for a research project after I had already done it. That's kind of, that's kind of the way academics work, and, um, and so I can kind of BS my way through that. <laughs> so, um, so now we're gonna take it apart. Uh, and please interrupt if you've got questions, if I'm not explaining something, whatever, uh, interrupt me at any time and we'll talk about it. I mean, that's what the rest of this talk is about. So, um, so we've, covered the, we've covered the details. You can see we've got a thrift store wooden frame um, and a lot of masking tape. So part of, part of, let me tell you about the requirements, I guess, real quick. So I needed something that I could bring to Ohio. So it had to fit in a briefcase. I, um, that, was, that was the first requirement. Um, so I bought this briefcase after the project was done, but I generally built something that I thought was you know, the right size. Uh, and then I gradually got bigger and bigger, bigger briefcases as all the crap went in it. Um, <laughs> so, so we got a thrift store frame, frame um, and a lot of masking tape to you know, hold it on and to block out the light. Oops, don't touch it. Um, and uh, then we have an acrylic case. This was laser cut from a single piece of large acrylic. Uh, it Mounts, uh, it mounts the LEDs, but I'll show you that later. You know, one, one thing at a time, right? Small plastic box. Um, and I have a two-way mirror. Who's familiar with two-way mirrors? It's a stupid name. Um, but, so, if we hold this, it's a mirror, right? Uh, if you put enough light behind it, it's a screen. Um, uh, you see these in cop shows, right? Or, you know, you might have seen them in an interrogation room. I, <laughs> I only see them in cop shows. <laughs> so, so then we have this array of LEDs, right? I, I said before it's 32 by 40. Um, and each one of these boards is a 8 by 8. So it's a 64 pixel board you can buy from Adafruit, right? Uh, you can buy this, this single little board, and each board is a serial, is 64 LEDs in serial with each other, basically, basically in a um, XY pattern, right? Like one through zero through seven, uh, eight through 15, et cetera. So then you have these in four sections and five, uh, four columns and five rows. And um, behind that is um, one, one moment. I'm going to turn it off before we keep poking at it. Um, so they all mount with tiny little plastic screws to the back of this acrylic piece. Uh, so the acrylic is custom cut with each, each mounting hole cut out by a laser cutter. And all of that drawing was done with Python through an SVG program, right? So um, my local makerspace tech shop has a laser cutter that you can say control P with any vector diagram, right? You command print, right? Runs through the print dialog and it will laser on whatever you put in there. Um, and there's a lot of like safety things that you, know, you ought to know before you start just lasering things. but. Um, but they'll tell you. Uh, so, so I drew all this with, with, uh, with an SVG writer, right? So all it is is an array of this is a circle at this location, and uh, you should cut it out. Uh, or this is a square at this location, you should cut it out. And so I, so I took a pair of calipers on one board, and I measured all the, all the little mounting holes, and then I wrote a dictionary object. Um, 
I wrote a dictionary object for one board, and then I said, make those in four, four columns, five rows, one millimeter apart. And I can, get, I can get less than millimeter resolution on this laser, and so the back of this is gorgeous. Um, well, I mean, not the very back. Uh, so then I wired it up, and now it's not pretty. Um, but you don't see this side, right? Uh, so then we have uh, power and data. Each, each board takes one data in. And you can string these boards together, but the, um, the controller I used runs 64, um, will run 64 LEDs per channel. There's eight channels on each board. Um, and each block is 64. Uh, is 64 LEDs by default, and so I only have to I only have to run data in to each board. I don't have to also run data out. But you could with different controllers, you could run tons and tons of LEDs on one single strand. Uh, but you uh, there's pluses and minuses to it. Uh, question, Eric. Yeah, what is the controller? Was that fruit or? Uh, so the controller is a Fade Candy board. Um, Fade Candy is based off a of Teensy, which is an Arduino compatible. Um, Controller and Fade Candy is specifically made for USB control of these um, these WS2812 LEDs with a built-in. Each LED has a built-in chip which uh, reshapes the serial line and uh, accepts or passes on a data packet uh, for for how bright and what colors it should display. Uh, so then the the Fade Candy board is a custom build of a Teensy to drive these lights that connects to USB and there's a server and it's a, it's a beautiful open source project and there's Python control of that, right? So the, the big core of what I'm doing here with Python is because of the Fade Candy project. Um, so Fade Candy? Fade Candy, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll link up to that and um, F-A-D-E-C-A-N-D-Y by a woman named Micah Scott. Um, so, yeah, so so there's three fake candy boards. Each one can do eight um, can do eight channels. So I've got fake candy, fake candy, and then half of fake candy board. So I, I also started the the process of picking the format and picking the LEDs was to kind of um, I decided that I was going to pick my pick my wooden frame first. Uh, I, I, I initially kind of wanted an oval, couldn't really find one of those. Um, so then, then I kind of built the rest of the project around this, uh, which, is, which is why we're limited to, to this size uh, and this shape. Um, and so after doing that, then buying the, the uh, matrix boards versus the, the, these LEDs also come in several different formats. They come in, you can buy a circle that's got 12, that's all one data channel. Um, you could buy strips, like for under cabinet lighting or for, um, I use them for architectural lighting. Um, uh, so so these, these LEDs with, and this Fade Candy project and Adafruit, um, SparkFun, like they all kind of, there's like a big community of people doing stuff with this setup, right? And Python is one of the languages that, uh, that Fade Candy works really well with. And OpenPixel Control is the other. So OpenPixel Control is a TCP server that runs on a little Linux box that, um, that I can feed it. I feed it um, my string data and it, it sends it out here. So that's, a, that's a, the one big, my set of libraries and places I bought this stuff from and all that for uh, for this project. Um, and then uh, I've got Simple CV. Uh, or is anybody familiar with Simple CV? It does computer vision for, um, for Python, and it does it in a really simple way based on OpenCV, but with a really nice API, right? So if you've ever done work with OpenCV, Simple CV is sort of like what request is to URL lib, Simple CV is to OpenCV. It's, it's a, also a lovely project. Um, so then I've got a Python, I've got OpenCV, or uh, OpenPixel Control is a, is a server running on my Linux box, and then I've got a Python runner, which uh, I can feed it several different methods, right? So I've got this mirror method, I've got the, I can display any image, I can display any GIF. Um, 
and and I can choose between those with a remote on my phone, right? So so the runner, uh, I feed the runner a uh, basically a string that says run this Python class, and the Python class talks to OpenCV uh, or or Open Pixel Control. All these everything's open. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then I've got a Flask server, which I can run both my I can run both the slides and the um, and the device from my phone, which lets me wander around the room. Um, but it's intentionally complicated so that I can talk about the details, right? Like, um, <laughs> I I never if if I were going to. Um, Make if I were going to make this and install it and have it do one thing, it would be nowhere near this complicated. It would just be like a Raspberry Pi glued to the back of this that runs one Python script. Um, but uh, most of the things that I do are are actually much bigger than this, and they revolve around getting um, dealing with several uh, web APIs, uh, both both. Uh, ingrown and um, external, like use Twilio a lot. Um, and I use a lot of, you know, ingress and outgress, uh, egress and managing things like um, security controls and things like that for automated environments. Uh, so my normal work is this complicated, and this is unnecessarily complicated in order to talk about, you know, dealing with networks and dealing with um, uh, distributed environments. Yes? No, no, no. Okay, so Fade, Fade Candy, uh, the chip runs C, and then there's a there's a, a server which runs. It'll run on a Raspberry Pi, or it'll run on um, cheap uh, cheap embedded Linux, and then that has a Python client. So the stuff I wrote was in Python, but uh, further down the stack, it gets into. Sorry, the question was uh, was the, is there Python on the embedded chip? Uh, and that answer is no. Um, For this installation, I did not write any microcontroller code. Uh, I, I considered it, and then I just ran out. Of, I considered running a controller off a, a little uh, Arduino with a Wi-Fi chip. Uh, I just ran out of time. Um, so all the programming you did was just Python? Uh, everything that does anything in this presentation is Python. Sweet, yep. Uh, yeah, so so you can you can get super far without doing any Python code, or without doing any embedded code. Um, and even... There's Arduino control that you can do with with a Python script too, right? Like if you keep your Python attached to the US, or if you keep your Arduino attached to USB, um, you can control anything on the Arduino over the serial connection, which uh, a lot of people do to you know run servos from a PC super easily, right? Um, I got into a conversation with someone online about how uh, he he thought that. Kids these days, right? You start with kids these days, and I'm already kind of like, <laughs> um, we're we're not doing hardware hacking, right? Uh, and that you know we used to we used to build our own PCI boards, and uh, I'm like, okay, well they are. They're just using USB and Arduino and Raspberry Pi. It's not it's not that this doesn't exist. It's different. So um, and it's super. It's way more accessible. Um, I've been doing I've been doing hardware hacking since I was a kid. Um, I did some school for electrical engineering and um, and and I've been a professional software developer for uh, several years. Um, and it's now more accessible than it's ever been. Uh, the hobbies the hobbyist sites are full of documentation. The um, there's way more open source code. You can do things from a PC. You can do things on an embedded controller. You can move back and forth. And then you can start to move up and down the stack. You know, when you want to get more, if you want to build your own circuit boards, uh, that's easier too, right? And that's never been, uh, it's never been as easy as it is now to order three of a printed circuit board and solder all your own components on it from Oshpark, uh, which is a, Oshpark is a place based out of Portland where you can design a PCB and get three of them fabricated for, uh, next to nothing, um, as far as PCBs are concerned. Um, Osh Park, um, right? So, and Arduino is totally OSH, uh, open source hardware. Okay. 
Park. Um, uh, so Arduinos are also open source. The schematics for an Arduino is open source, right? So if you start with an Arduino, you start plugging it into a breadboard, and then eventually you want to make 50 of them, you can edit the Arduino source code, add your own pieces, add your own components, and then get one printed at Oshpark and solder it up, and you've got, you've got your piece, right? Um, and so you can do all this for, you know, I mean, less than 100 bucks, which is, uh, sounds like a lot, but it's not uh, for this, uh, which that's super cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't do that often, but I did, uh, I did one pretty recently. Let's see, what else? So is there anything anybody else wants? Yeah. Do you have a firm that will do the wave soldering? Uh, a firm that will do the wave soldering. I, I don't use them, uh, so I can't speak to any, but there, there are small round fabrication firms. Um, yeah, I, I solder by hand, um, uh, and, and it, gets, it gets troublesome. But I, I typically only build two or three of something, so... Um, so getting, getting even a short run manufacturer is uh, kind of more trouble than it's worth for me. What's the total cost of the build of materials for this art installation? What is the total cost for the build of materials here? I hit $1 a pixel. I'll let you do the math. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, not, not particularly cheap. But if, if I were to do this one again, I could probably get the cost way down. Uh, buying, buying components from hobby vendors, making one of something is always more expensive than, than making 10 of them or even making it the second time. Um, so I, th I think I could probably do it for a quarter a piece to a quarter a pixel. I mean, like, that's, a, that's a rough estimation that a friend of mine who builds computers likes to, likes to work with, is like how many, how many dollars per pixel of desktop screen. And so I, he and I hit the same numbers and I build a much smaller screen. Um, <laughs> Time. This was uh, probably one weekend and probably two weekends in the hardware and uh, uh, I don't know, 15 or 20 hours in the software. Um, this was this was very much a hobby project. Um, sorry, the question was how much time did I put in? Um, yeah, it was it was uh, not a ton, but uh, also not my first project. So um, I had 30 minutes in the laser. <laughs> And probably, I guess probably even in several hours just setting up the laser and doing the, um, writing out the SVG files for it and things like that. I see, I, I covered just a ton without looking at my notes, and now I've got to flip through all my notes to figure out where we are. Um, oh, there's some fun stuff. Okay, so, so uh, if I turn it back on, then... Okay, so this is really bright now uh, without the, without the, oh, I forgot to say, I just glued a piece of sketch paper to the back of this mirror to diffuse it. Um, so that's, uh, where'd the camera go? Okay, so this is, this is um, what I was talking about with the, so the vellum is super important because your eye, this is what I was talking about with impressionism, right? So your eye makes up the details when it's, when we take away a lot, some of the resolution, right? So taking away the points, your eye will make up the details, and that's why this is, uh, why one of the influences was uh, sort of impressionism, right? So you can't, you can't really see, you can't make out the details of my face nearly as well as when the vellum's up. Um, so that's that's one of the one of the interesting things about about this canvas is yeah, I'm now I'm a silhouette, but it it changes significantly just by putting in the uh, putting in this this other piece here. Um, who is familiar with Twitch Plays Pokemon? So about half the room. Let me tell you about Twitch Plays Pokemon. Uh, Twitch Plays Pokemon, uh, Twitch TV is a site to stream video games. Um, and uh, somebody built an emulator which would run a Game Boy game in the main screen and the chat box will run the controllers. 
So, um, so 100,000 people at its peak were playing the same Game Boy controller. And it was total chaos, and it was lovely. It was this weird experiment. It was tons of fun uh, to watch people try to collaborate on playing, playing one game. So, um, so I want you to all get on my Wi-Fi network and play Tetris. <laughs> so I'm running a, uh, your phone's fine. Um, uh, the, there is a Wi-Fi network called Mirror. The password is Mirror Mirror. It's super cute, right? Um, the, the URL, if you're on an Apple device, is nook.local colon 5000 or 192.168.1.100 colon 5000. Uh, and if you hit slash Tetris um, as well, it's slightly easier. But you can just, there's a Tetris button on there. Please don't push the other buttons. Uh, there's a Tetris. <laughs> There's a Tetris button on there, uh, so hit that. Did it? Uh, no, you have. Uh, are you on my network? Yeah. And colon five thousand. Yeah. Uh, maybe the link is wrong. Slash Tetris. Maybe the link is wrong. Maybe it's Tetris control. I don't know. Go to the first page and then hit the Tetris button. That should work. I'm gonna do it too. It just. Okay. So um, Sam is saying, make sure to put the make sure to put the port and the slash Tetris on the end. Yeah. Okay. Some of you are on. <laughs> also, landscape works better. Oh, the link. The link is. I see what you're saying. The link is broken. You've got to just manually plug in the URL. Yeah, okay, so there, there's one button which just is for infuriating your peers. Uh, the, uh, no, it's, it's the down button. It's the down button. So the, so the down button will, will drop the piece, right? And so you can't, you can't, so yeah, so the rotate button. Anyway, this is, this is Tetris and we're all playing together. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so um, so it's super silly. Like this is intentionally a very silly piece, um, and and I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, I hope I hope you guys got something out of it. I'd like to take questions about whatever you want, um, and I'm happy to talk about specific details because I I didn't want to be too low level or too high level, but I kind of wanted to let the room drive. Are you about this to parties yet? No, no. <laughs> this is the first public display. This is I legitimately built this for Pi Ohio. It'd, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd, it'd be a fun game, right? I I enjoy it. <laughs> okay, so I what I did with this was I took a port. Uh, he asked if I built Tetris in Python. Uh, someone else built Tetris with Pi Game, and I. Uh, I totally changed all the display mechanic. I ripped Pygame out, I changed the display mechanics, and I um, just used all their Python logic for how the board works, basically. And so let me tell you about the way this works, because this is actually kind of cool. So y'all who are, who are on the site are um, connected to a WebSocket. Uh, so I've got a Flask WebSocket server sitting on my, uh, on my tiny Linux computer. and. Every, everybody has a everybody has a uh, a WebSocket connected to this, and so every time you push a button, it uh, sends that sends that button press to Redis. Some somebody probably wrote like a like a JavaScript uh, loop to send the controls, right? Anybody done that yet? Right? Go in the go in the console and like wow, true, uh, rotate. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so then the server, the the uh, Python implementation takes from the Redis queue, and it just it just pulls one control off the queue every time. It says, "Okay, we're we're somebody pushed right. We're we're going right." And so it's a Redis queue. It's a Flask socket IO server and it's a lot of clients and um, and then one Pygame rip. Yeah, 
Yeah, every time you press a button, it's going to show up here somehow. Um, <laughs> and then it resets, it resets the queue at the end of each game, uh, deletes the whole queue, and you, and you start over. But, you know, uh, but there's a lot of pounding, so. <laughs> Uh, this is this is um, this is a web app. Yeah, yeah. The controller. Can, can the game play as a web app? Here? Could the game play as a web app? Yes. Uh, so actually, what every time you push a button, I write a new PNG. Like it's a new it's a new graphic file, and all this is doing is displaying the graphics file. Um, so you could play as a as a web app that showed the that showed the graphics file as a stream. I can get 16 frames a second. I actually limit it uh, manually for the camera. The question was, uh, how fast can I drive it? I get 16 frames a second, um, and I artificially limit it in order to um, give it a different effect. No, no, no. It's uh, it's near impossible to clear things. It's not a normal size Tetris board. It's uh, I made sure it was at least even so that it was possible to clear things. Um, that the that the that the size of the board and the size of the pieces lined up. But um, but yeah. So this is all all my code is open source. It's trash. Um, uh, it's it's really bad code. But uh, if you go to GitHub slash Isaac Kelly two s's one a. Um, you you'll find it. It's called Snow White, uh, and I've got my, the the program that I wrote to make the CAD file for the laser cutter. I've got the the Flash Socket I/O server. I've got the Tetris stuff. I've got the the simple CV stuff. Um, most files are less than a hundred lines long. It's pretty pretty um, uh, uncommon and terrible, but uh, I you know it it got me through. Um, any other questions? Okay, cool. Um, it looks like we've got 20 minutes. I'll just leave Tetris running, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, two more questions. <laughs> Thank you. I did uh, two more questions. Doug? Uh, what did TSA say? Actually, so um, I was concerned about this, uh, about carrying a lot of homemade electronics in a giant metal briefcase onto a plane. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and it was a carry-on, so um, so I did that. Uh, I I actually preferred to go through security with it than to trust to the baggage handlers. Um, and actually, that's oh, I didn't I didn't say this either. I'll say that in a minute. Um, but I randomly got moved into the pre-check line, and I didn't even take my shoes off. I just <laughs> threw it on the case, and and uh, and it it may or may not have uh, buzzed. I, I there was some kind of commotion near the X-ray, but um, <laughs> but nobody said anything to me, so I picked it up and I walked away. You didn't ask him any questions. Why would I? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so are you looking to give this away, or are you going to trust your chances on the way back? Um. I'm 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 taking it back. I might I might ship it or check it. Uh, I I'm not sure. Uh, um, I'm not sure. I I may give this away. I actually gave some thought to um, going to Maine PyCon and giving this to the the Pi Ladies auction. Um, I think that'd be kind of fun. Um, so. Another another bad design, right? I, I could I could actually probably give another talk on all the all the bad design decisions I made here, um, but this this piece of acrylic I chose acrylic mirror uh, two way glass for several reasons. One, it's less likely to cut me. I've cut myself on uh, two way glass several times, um, and you know I like I, blood, my blood in in the body. Um, but the problem with this was. Uh, that I left the webcam on, and these get super hot, and it, it warped my glass. So it's now also a fun house, <laughs> cubist, impressionist, <laughs> junk pile. Um, yeah. You, you absolutely can't, but you can't play Tetris now. So <laughs> it's not like you're any good at it. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, basically, so I've got my Python. My Python client will um, will cut apart a PNG. Will cut apart any image file or any GIF. Um, oh, I can play animated GIFs on it. That's super fun. Um, <laughs> so it'll it'll cut apart any any GIF or. So basically, the 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 path for the camera, for the Tetris, for displaying images of Blocko or whatever. Um, you start with an image that's you know this size. You cut it down to 32 by 40, and then you iterate over the image. Um, I I am am not an algorithms person, so I just did a O in squared dumb algorithm for iterating over this image every pixel one at a time, and then you feed that to each specific. Uh, you turn that into a line, uh, which is of of LEDs, right? Uh, so so. Take an image, bring it down to size, run all thousand pixels, uh, check check each color value, which you can do with uh, pill or simple CV, um, to to get the <laughs> to 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 get the individual color value. And so this this will display um, uh, sixteen bit color, eight bit color, yeah, eight bit color, um, yeah. Any other questions? I, I, I'm afraid I stopped repeating the questions, too. Um, if you're looking at separating the interface to where you could drive just a projector, instead of driving all your hardware, you just drive a display. Oh, absolutely. So it actually scales to... Yeah, you you could do this any size. Um, part of part of what I wanted to do was you know talk about doing LEDs because um, you know they're bright and shiny. Um, but yeah, there's no reason that you wouldn't. If I that's the other thing. If I were building this for real, I'd probably just put a TV behind it, and it would be this big, and um, and, and it'd be a very different thing. But but the fade candy is a is a neat project, um, and uh, you you can build things that that aren't screens, right? Uh, and part of this seems like a screen, but it's just a really, really terrible one. Uh, and once you put the diffusion on it, it's no longer even really a screen. It's just it's more of a canvas. Um, so if you put a screen, you could. I mean, you're you're all used to programming, right? You can do whatever you want with a screen. Um, and so artificial limitation uh, kind of makes slightly more creative work sometimes. Um, it probably didn't hear. It was probably just BS, but you know. Cool. Thank you all so much. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wander off, and y'all can keep playing Tetris. <laughs>